Welcome to the Birth Lounge Podcast, an empowering space for expecting and new parents to hear candid conversations with experts to learn how to craft their ideal birth. You've got scary questions that you want to stop Googling, and we've got evidence-based answers with data to back it all up. Hey, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of the Birth Lunch Podcast. I'm smiling so big today because I'm so excited for this conversation. So I came across our guest, Malia Funk, today um, on TikTok, actually, and her TikTok caught my eye with a video labeled, Things That Will Piss You Off About Healthcare, and of course, I was like... <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to watch this one. Like, this is exactly what I love. Um, And then I actually discovered her business, the POV, and she runs it uh, with a chief medical officer, Kirti Patel. And it is a web-based, uh, it's a website online that you can go and actually get digital health care. You can go and find new providers. You can rate providers. You can look up specific um, characteristics, if you will, of of providers so that you can ensure you're getting health care that you deserve. I mean, I just got full body chills telling you that intro. So I know everyone out there is like, hell yeah, let's dive in. So Malia, welcome to the show. Hey, hey everyone. Thanks for having me. And I'm so excited to be in the birth lounge. I wish it, I wish it was like an actual lounge that we could be together. <laughs> that would be so fun. Um, maybe, maybe in the future. One day, one day, I do have big dreams. Okay, so before we dive into all the really juicy stuff where, you know, we tell people how to find care that they actually deserve, step us back to beginning of the POV. What made you start this? What was your kind of, you know, rocket fuel, your catalyst that made you be like, okay, this is it. We've got to have a website for people to be able to go look up healthcare providers so that they can make sure they are getting like care that is transparent and filled with integrity and consensual and collaborative, something that's respectful so that we can, you know, get care that we deserve. Yeah, absolutely. So Man, it was a journey, but I started my career in corporate healthcare, which like sounds like an oxymoron, but somehow isn't. Yeah. Um, I was working with like big healthcare companies, J and J, United Health Group. You know, I was in private equity, uh, which was great because I learned a lot about how decisions about patient care are made, like how a major hospital is going to approach maternal health. Uh, and I saw really how kind of broken and not patient centric and complicated the US health system is. And then I, and I knew about all that, but then it failed me personally. And that was kind of like the fire, the rocket ship, like you said. So my story was that like I went to get an IUD and it ended up being in the wrong place. Like the IUD is supposed to sit like this in your uterus, right? Mine was like in my cervix like that. And that can happen, like actually it just like depends on the shape of your cervix and your uterus and like all that stuff. But here's what was crazy. It took me three years and five doctors to get someone to take it out because every time I went in and was like, I bleed constantly, I'm in pain, like things are bad. They were like, we can see the strings in your vagina and you know, you don't really want to waste the IUD. You already had to put in and it was so painful, like just, you know, maybe deal with it. <laughs> And that is really like that experience. I was like, okay, so I know that the healthcare system is not designed for me. Like there has to be another way. And that's when I got really in, in like involved in like femtech and digital health. So essentially like healthcare companies that are being built by women and people with a vagina for women and people with a vagina that are trying to like work outside the traditional healthcare system to like do things better. And so that all of that kind of rolled into the POV. I found, I interviewed a bunch of OBGYNs so I could understand like their perspective and what was going on. And then Dr. Kirthi Patel, who is a gynecologist, she doesn't do the OB part anymore. We just like really clicked and she really like believed my mission. Like she self-identifies as like feminist gynecologist. And I was like, oh yeah, like you and me, right? So that's kind of how it started. And we've just been going from there. That is awesome. Okay, so very weird to hear your story, how you got into this. Um, listeners, if you're new here and or you haven't scrolled back to like the very beginning of the days, I know we have over 200 episodes now, but I had an IUD put in in 2017 and it was 
put in incorrectly somehow. And I bled constantly for maybe 12 or 14 weeks. It's been a couple of years now and it was very traumatic. So I've like blocked this stuff out, but it too took me many doctors to get someone to take it out because another provider had placed it. And since my placement, that provider had been fired from his position. And I didn't want <laughs> anyone to take it out. It was so bad. I was in so much pain. Um, I've never had another ID. Actually, that experience alone pushed me into uh, basal body temperature um, expiration and understanding what my personal cycle looks like. And so now that's how I manage my menstrual cycle. But uh, the IUD, uh, solidarity there, I totally know what that is like to uh, be almost ping pong back and forth between providers with no answer. Nobody's willing to help you. You're in a lot of pain. And also, you know, blood is so triggering because we're taught that when we're bleeding, something is wrong. And just as women, as people with uteruses and vaginas, we know that bleeding constantly for weeks and weeks. And in your story, it sounds like months on end is not normal. We know that's not normal. And it's really hard to be in a system that doesn't hear you and isn't prioritizing uh, your health in, in some regards, right? Okay, so from there, talk to us about the services that you can get at POV. From what I like kind of just lightly discovered on TikTok, it was virtual gynecology services, birth control, you can get some digital health services. What does POV have to offer us? Yeah, so essentially what Dr. Patel and I do is we go out and we find all the great digital health services and regular providers who are providing really modern, compassionate, accessible care. We're especially passionate about the folks who are like trying to do it differently. And we'll come back to that. And we do like in-depth due diligence of what they provide. We look at their care plans. We look at their pricing, their website, their messaging. And then we make them, if they kind of meet our standards, we give them a rating on several key factors like bedside manner, um, access, diversity, and inclusion. We put them on our directory and then it's free for patients to come in and search and be like, okay, I think I want to change my birth control and I'm in California. And then we'll show you in California, here's who we vetted that could either give you birth control online. You could go in, you know, some mixture of those two things, like whatever is working for you today. That's awesome. Okay. And how are providers finding you? Are they, they're applying to be on. So already that's a different caliber provider. Somebody who's going to go on the internet, seek out a platform that says, I want to be set apart from the rest of the healthcare system for my colleagues who maybe aren't practicing trauma-informed care, maybe aren't LGBTQ friendly, maybe mm -hmm. aren't care of color. I want to get my name out there so that I can serve people who actually need it. Yeah, absolutely. Like the first question we ask, it's like a screener, is just how are you or your practice or your clinic improving healthcare? And if they're not willing to answer that question or they can't, then we don't need to have a conversation. And then from there on, we can be like, have, has your staff had formal training in trauma-based care or you know, uh, trauma-informed care, I mean, or LGBTQ care? Like we go into the details there and like, they don't have to be perfect and have everything. Uh, they just need to be like trying <laughs> really yeah. hard to yeah. provide great care. Yeah, which for me is just so sad or it's just a reminder of like, when we're out there trying so hard, it really is kind of the base care, right? Like that's <laughs> trauma informed care that a lot of us strive really hard to do because mainstream medical care isn't like that. That really is just the base of what patients deserve. Like every provider should be trauma informed. It shouldn't be a special provider is trauma informed. And to be completely honest, you shouldn't have to identify yourself as a trauma informed care provider. Patients should just be coming to the healthcare system expecting that every Everyone's going to be trauma informed. Unfortunately, that's not what it looks like. Bummer. Yeah, it's wow. so true. It's so true. And other things like we always ask, like, what training has your staff done against racial biases in medicine? And like, you would think that would just be like in the core medical curriculum, but it is so not. <laughs> it's so not. <laughs> No, even now in 2022, after, you know, the last few years being so eye opening for mm -hmm. things that are severely dysfunctional to a point where it's literally costing us human life in our country, and we still don't have core curriculum in medical school or nursing school um, or PT school or any 
any right. organization really hasn't done their due diligence yet to add that stuff into the curriculum, which, you know, day late and a dollar short, here we are in the trenches almost. Yes. Um, okay, so let's say that someone has moved to a new city and um, they really love their old gynecologist and it was a trauma-informed uh, provider and, um, you know, they never felt manipulated or coerced and they felt like all their things were heard and th this provider that they left uh, in, that, in their, their last state always presented them with options and wanted them to be kind of in control of the decisions. How do I find that same provider now in my new state using the POV? Yeah, amazing. So first of all, like not even with the POV, if you have that person in your original city, just ask them if they know somebody in your new place where you're moving because you already trust them. And I think you should start there, right? Uh, and then maybe, you know, go with friends and family. And then if that doesn't work, please come to us. Like we're happy to help. I would say one thing that we're still like working to do really well is have in-person providers in every city. Like it's a matter of scale, right? Like there are so many OBGYNs out there. We're trying to get through them. So if you go on the POV and you search for whatever you need from an OBGYN, maybe preventative care, an annual visit, a pap smear, just to establish care, there will be OBGYN options for you, hopefully in your city. If there's not, because we just haven't gotten there yet, we're actually right now, like as we build out our network, we're doing free concierge matching. So like you email us at info at the POV .us, like, I'm so-and-so, I'm looking to establish care with a new gynecologist just to maintain my health and I'm in XYZ city and like, we'll get back to you with recommendations and it helps us build our network and also like helps you. So uh, we, we, we constantly have like a wait list for that service, but we like churn it pretty quickly. That is awesome. Okay. And is this a place where people can come and rate and review providers as well? Yeah, so we accept um, ratings and reviews from patients. We actually like, we need it, right? Because I live in New York, like I can do all this diligence and interview a provider in California, but like I've never actually been to see that provider. So what we do is we collect the reviews, we read all of them and then put them into our recommendations. And the reason for that is we noticed that like on ZocDoc, Amazon, Google, whatever, a lot of reviews are fake. First of all, and we want to protect against that. And then also like you'll go on ZocDoc and a doctor will have one star because someone couldn't find parking. And that's really not what we're getting at here. Right. <laughs> right. So we um, we're still at a place where we really want to curate like what's going into the reviews. So we read every single one that gets sent to us and it's so helpful. That is awesome. Okay, so is there anything that the general public needs to know about the POV or can do other than spread the word to support the POV? Oh my gosh, that's such um, that's such a good question. I'm so glad you asked. Like, reach out to us and tell us like your story because your story about how you found a provider, what was important for you, what you're having a hard time finding, like that helps us make our product better. Um, and we need feedback and like. It's hard to get feedback from users because a lot of times people reach out to us and they're like, we love it. And I'm like, but what could be better so that we can be better? Um, so engage with us. Like we love to have conversations. Like I meet with people all the time. Um, I would really appreciate anyone's time to help us like build this product to be better for women and uterus owners. Yeah. And if listeners out there had good doctors where they were like, oh my God, this doctor has got to be on the POV because everyone needs this doctor in their life. Do we just email it to you and say like, please reach out to this doctor. Here's how you get in touch. They need to be part of your site. Yes. That would be so amazing. We do get things like that. <laughs> it's so funny. Sometimes people are like, I have a great doctor, but I'm worried I won't be able to get appointments anymore if they're on the <laughs> POV. And I'm like, I, it'll be fine. I promise. Like, <laughs> you know, we're not Google. And uh, so, yes, please send that over with a couple of bullets about like what made that doctor so great, like whatever it was for you, like nothing is too small um, and we'll reach out to them and we'll do all the work. So all you have to do is shoot us a note to um, info at the POV .us. And there's a contact form on our website if you forget that. Cool. And we'll put the website and that email address in uh, the show notes for you guys awesome. too. So you can uh, visit it there and then grab those links. Okay. So I just have um, two more questions. My first question is, 
Now, with all of the recent uh, legislation in our country surrounding Roe versus Wade, uh, emergency contraception, birth control, uh, just general health care, has become really hard to get your hands on. How is the POV supporting this movement and uh, you know in increasing that access to people? And if there were someone uh, out there listening that needed those support services, could the POV help and how would they do that? Yeah, so we are so grateful that we get to play a role in spreading this information, and we're kind of doing it in, in two ways. One, connecting people with providers that can provide either emergency contraception or abortions, um, especially medical abortion, so using the abortion pill, which you still are able to access in all 50 states through a variety of services that are on our platform. Um, we also have our guide to abortion, which kind of walks through very tactically what to expect, you know, what is medical abortion versus surgical, what are, like, what do you need to look out for, kind of what are the benefits of each or things to consider, um, even cost we include in there, so we just want to be like disseminators of information on how to access those things, and currently I feel like on our current platform, it doesn't matter what state you're in, we have a resource for you to be able to access either plan B or abortion. Um, we wanna add more resources, but we like focused first on just making sure there was coverage. That makes me so happy. I, um, you know, nothing jazzes me up more than accessible healthcare, than just getting humans basic rights that they deserve at the end yeah. of the day. That's awesome. Okay. And one thing, sorry, just really quickly, I wanted to shout, yeah. shout this out, that a couple of um, medical abortion providers, so that's people that provide the abortion pill, like Plan C or Aid Access, they are doing um, preemptive orders. So essentially you can order the pill so that you can have it in your medicine cabinet and it's shelf stable for three years. So if you're in a state where you feel like access might be challenging in the future, I would go ahead and order that. Like, they make sure to fill all the people with an active pregnancies orders first. So you're not taking it away from someone who needs it. But with the with the abortion pill, you need to take it as quickly as possible. And after 10 or 11 weeks, it starts to be like not as effective or maybe not even an option. And so it can be great to just have it like in your medicine cabinet, if not for you, for a friend or family member nearby. And so I highly recommend like if you're in a state with restricted access that you order one ahead of time so that you can have it. It hurts my heart that we have to have these conversations in 2022, how to like protect ourselves. I know. I like feel very teary eyed right now, just even thinking that I need to arm myself or the people in my life with the basic health care access. Um, because our country doesn't do it. Oh, I don't know why yeah. that just tripped me up so bad. It does. It just, it breaks my heart that we can't trust that our healthcare system is going to take care of us if something goes wrong. Yeah, it's terrifying. Um, my baby sister is at college in a state with some of the most restrictive laws. And I'm just like, how, how do I protect her? How do I, like, I can't, like, there's nothing I can do, right? Yeah. Um, which yeah, feels terrible. Yeah. Uh, when all this went through, so I'm originally from Mississippi and I did my master's at the University of Alabama and I have family in Tennessee and Louisiana and Georgia and Florida and Texas and my family spread out all over the South. Um, and I did. I just did a mass text and said, if anyone needs anything, I'm in Massachusetts. You're safe here. We have an extra bedroom. Um, come on up if you need anything. Okay, so I do want to turn to something a little bit lighter and happier, um, how we're combating this very dysfunctional system that we all live in. And that is, you said that you're choosing providers that do things differently. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so I think that there is so much work to be done in innovation for healthcare for women and uterus owners. Like, as I'm sure a lot of listeners are aware, women weren't even required to be included in clinical trials into the 90s. And so we're so behind on like optimizing healthcare for people with a uterus. Even now, it's like uh, <laughs> healthcare is made for a man and then they like adjust it a little bit for a smaller man, aka a woman, but we're not smaller men. Um, and so I'm really into these companies that are trying to like reimagine how healthcare is delivered to make it actually work for women. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Um, 
obvious, it would be amazing if every single person could access an OBGYN who would be their pregnancy river guide, spiritual birth leader, advocate, advocate for them and their child when at the hospital. Uh, but that's just not a reality. And so I'm loving all these like virtual doula services that give you like a doula in your pocket that you meet with at a very like accessible price point. And they can be like FaceTiming you in the hospital. They're like calling your care team. Like they're working on behalf of you. They don't even have to be there. Um, so I'm very into that. And there are certain platforms, like one of them that comes to mind is Ruth Health that they have the doula on the platform. And then they also have pelvic floor therapy and like C-section recovery specialists. So you kind of like move through the care team as you go through your process. Um, another amazing example that I've seen is like the way PCOS gets treated in our current health system is like, it takes forever to diagnose. Like I think on average, it takes several years and multiple doctors. And then a lot, a lot of times the treatment is like to go on birth control. And it's like, okay, like that can work for some people, but like, not for everybody and what's the root cause and what if you're trying to get pregnant. Um, so I'm seeing these like care platforms where you get a whole care team, like nutrition, OBGYN, health coach that help you kind of work through PCOS at a more holistic level. And so when I see these solutions, like I see that they have the opportunity to prove out what care should look like for women and uterus owners so that it can be like adopted in mainstream healthcare. And so we really try to feature those solutions like across the POB. That is awesome. Oh my gosh. I love this. Okay. So my final question is what does the POV stand for? Okay. So it stands for point of view. Like we started it as like giving the point of view of us and experts and other feminists on options in healthcare, but secretly for the inner circle, which if you're listening to the birth lounge, like you're in the inner circle, it stands for the power of the vagina. And we love it so much. Like, I wish I had my POV hat because our O, you should like look at our logo. Our O is like a secret vagina. And, um, I love when people, I love when people finally realize it and they're like, oh my God, the O is a secret vagina. Like, so now you're in, you know, <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. Malia, this has been a fantastic talk. I know that everyone out there was like, I wish this was, was around when I first started going to the doctor. How many people transitioned to college? I'm just thinking about myself in this. Yes, that, me you too. Know, away from home. And, you know, you needed to find a doctor to care for you in your four, six, eight years away from home where, while you're going to school. For me, that was one of the biggest like adulthood transitions was trying to take over my medical care from my parents being, you know, the managers of that. So, oh my gosh, the POV, what a fantastic website. It's going to be so pivotal. I cannot wait to watch the POV completely blow up the healthcare system that we have now and put yes. the control <laughs> back into the patient's hands. I want to like get up and do a little jig. I want to dance. Yes. This is, amazing. this is so, so good. Okay. I feel like we have given people plenty of places that they can connect with you, but is there anything like your social media handles that people should follow you on to stay, uh, you know, closely connected during the days that isn't emailing? Yeah, absolutely. So if you have absolutely no chill, we are crazy on TikTok. So you can follow us on TikTok at POV by Malia. And actually, we have a new series coming out where we're going to be interviewing doctors and professionals who treat women and asking them like super hard questions. They're prepared for it. We're not like ambushing them, but we're literally going to be asking them questions like, why do doctors fat shame women? Like, and getting their perspective and trying to get to the bottom of this. And I think it's going to be really interesting. So if you have no chill, follow us on TikTok, POV by Malia. And then we also do Instagram and we have like more educational curated content, like how, what is plan B and how to get it. And that's um, get the POV on Instagram. So, I mean, I think they go together well, but you can pick which one works for you. <laughs> Cool. Oh my gosh, guys. Well, if you are listening to this at the time of air, you can go to any of our social medias and the POV will be tagged. And if you're listening to it a little bit after air, um, follow the links in the show notes. All right, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. This has been such a fun conversation. I hope that this is a resource that you use going forward. I hope that you leave today's episode feeling like, you know, I'm not stuck. I do have 
have some control here. I do have momentum that I can find a care provider that is aligned with me, whether that is finding a provider that looks like you, that is from the same place of the world as you, that has walked the same life as you, or just someone that has good bedside manner and is aligned with your uh, preferences and goals for your health care. You guys, you deserve care that is well, accessible and equitable, but also <laughs> respectful of you. You yes. just care that is going to make you leave that office feeling like I feel supported and I feel heard and I feel like my problems are actually uh, like being fixed. Like we have an action plan. I don't want you leaving the doctors feeling, wow, that was a waste of my time or they didn't hear me at all. Or I feel like I just talked in circles and I still don't have a plan of how to move forward. You guys, that's not healthcare. Um, go find a doctor who is is aligned with you and is truly, truly, truly there to serve you and is going to give you the care that you deserve. All right, you guys, I will see you next week on another episode of the Birth Lounge podcast. Until then, check us out on Instagram or YouTube or anywhere else that we are. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time on the Birth Lounge podcast. Until then, head over to Instagram and find us at Tranquility by Hehe and give us a follow. You can also check us out at thebirthlounge.com.